Welcome back guys, today we're just going to do a little bit of editing in Photoshop um, basically going to go through one of the images now uh, start to finish on my process if you haven't seen my previous video on frequency separation maybe go back and watch that now because I'm going to fast forward through quite a few of those processes at the start here so cool, let's get into it Cool, so I've got my image here open in Photoshop and um, the first thing I'm going to do is crop it to the right size so because it's going to go on Instagram we're going to do a 4x5 ratio here so at the top left you've got 4x5 and it will bring up if you click it you'll be able to move it around So what I always like to try and do is get the eyes lined up on the third line. I feel like if something works on one of the crosses or if it's central and then bang on the third line, it works so much better. It's just what really works for your composition. So, cool, happy with that. Should I bring it down a little bit just to get a bit of the fingers in there? Because I feel like they do add a bit to the image. First thing I'm gonna do is go filter, camera raw filter. So this is going to basically allow me to go into my raw file and just really sort out how I want the lighting and exposure to look. So I'll start off with an auto, see where that takes me. What have we got here? So yeah, quite like the way that's looking. Let's just have a little play. I'm going to take the highlights down a bit. Pull the shadows up. And by pressing P on your keyboard, you'll get a before and after there. So what we've been doing a lot recently is just bumping the texture, clarity and dehaze just up a little bit, just to get an extra little bit more detail in it and then making sure that the vibrance is back to like zero or thereabouts. Cool, bump the exposure a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like the look of that, so. Cool. So I'm using a Wacom tablet to do this, but you can do it with a mouse as well if you haven't got one. But I definitely recommend getting a Wacom tablet because they are pretty useful. It just saves so much time in the editing process. First things first, I'm going to do some frequency separation. As I said before, if you haven't seen my previous video on it, maybe go back and look at that first because you can get a lot of the actions you need to be able to do this. I've actually got this beauty retouch panel by a company called Retouching Academy. Um, this isn't sponsored at all, but it's just a really good tool I use to just save a bit of time. I don't use all of the functionality in this, but there's a few things that just save me save me time. And also, like you don't have to buy this, you can just make these individually yourself. But again, it just saves a bit of time. Cool, so I'm going to do a 16-bit frequency separation because my image is 16-bit RGB. Cool, and I'm going to bump that up to a number where the skin texture just disappears. So if you slowly make your way up, you can kind of get to a certain point where you can no longer see the skin text, you can just kind of see the tones through it. So I'm probably gonna go, sometimes it's good to zoom in and out here as well, just to kind of get a bit of a view from further away because you can really see where the skin texture gets lost. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna go to 28. This will all depend on the resolution of your image, like I've been doing some recently that are much smaller images. So it's, I'm probably using a radius of say 12 pixels, whereas this is a big 42 megapixel image from the Sony A7R 3 So I'm going to use a much larger pixel radius here. Boom. So the first thing I'm going to do here is turn off the high frequency layer. I'm just going to go on the low layer, use my mixer brush tool. Uh, which I've got set to 80, 75, 90, 40. Um, I feel like you can play around with those, whatever you, whatever makes you feel kind of most comfortable. And then again, also make sure that this little thing here is always turned on. In that, that way it kind of cleans the brush in every stroke so it doesn't kind of hold colour if you move around the image. Cool. So basically just going around here, just smoothing out any areas that aren't smooth. Again, I'm kind of like using lots of little brush strokes for this. Because if you drag stuff from too far from one area to the other, you can see it just ruins it. So it's about keeping anything that looks kind of a similar tone together and just, just blending in those areas. So instead of having big harsh lines, you want this to look as smooth as possible. Yeah. 
yeah just slowly blending everything together so it's a good way to take away dark circles as well underneath the eyes if you kind of slowly come up into it you can really like lighten those up shout out to Blair uh, who this image is of uh, Blazzy on Instagram if you want to go check her stuff out she's awesome cool and then onto the body as well again just softening up the skin complexion cool and again zoom in and out just to kind of see so I can see here if there's a bit it just needs blending a bit more cool that's pretty good so zoom in We'll turn the high frequency layer back on so you can see if I just turn it on and off how that's changed things up already so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my high frequency layer so turn off the other so you've only got that one exposed and then I'm going to use my custom high frequency curves layer again this is in my previous video all of the exact codes of how to do this so go and check that if you don't have it already and if you have done this make sure you save it to your curves just so you don't have to do it every single time I'm going to come back to my high frequency layer. I'm going to go to my clone stamp tool. Uh, and I've got this set down to about 23%. I've kind of moved this up and down, but I don't want it to be too high because I want it to blend with the stuff underneath it, not just completely overtake it. Got okay, some zooming in here. Of course, cool, so just going to press Option to select from somewhere. And it's basically paint on anywhere that seems a little bit too dark or a little bit too light. Again, we're trying to smooth everything out here. Not so much that it's completely flat, but anything that's kind of quite different. If you've ever done dodging and burning before, it's very similar to that. You just kind of find the dark areas, find the lighter areas, and just try and make them a bit more neutral. And also, this is a great way to clean up any blemishes that are on the skin as well. And what's always good to do as well, where you sample from, that should be skin that looks similar to the skin you're replacing. So as soon as you get to somewhere like on between like the top lip and the cheek here, that skin's quite different between those two. So I wouldn't want to select from here and then start painting over here. Otherwise you can see the skin texture looks very different. So we're trying to select from somewhere that the skin texture is very similar to it. This can take a while. It really depends on how good the quality of the skin is underneath it. And zoom out a little bit. So we're going to try and remove some of the under eye by again finding somewhere that's kind of very close to it. So it's all light strokes. This is where putting the flow down a bit lower can really help. That way it blends in better with what's underneath it. It's all about blending. And you can see here I've lost a bit of the texture so I'm going to take some texture from somewhere else that's close by and just bring that back in. Again, always sampling from somewhere that's nearby. So at this point as well, if you wanted to start getting rid of these hairs, you could slowly get rid of those in this area as well. Maybe just bring some back at the top here. I've always got a soft brush when I do this as well because it just again helps things blend a lot better with what's below it. Cool. Cool, so now I can delete my curves layer and then turn the two underneath ones back on. And you can see now we've got some pretty clean skin. And if we turn that off so you can see the before and after. It's quite a significant improvement for not actually that much work. Cool, so now it's time to colour tone this. So what I generally do first is maybe make like a... Hmm, what way should we take this? I think what I might do first is use a black and white layer to just kind of bring out some contrast. I think the aim when I colour grade is to generally bring out a bit more contrast in everything. So I bring the reds down. The yellows up, you can kind of see 
play around with different things. But for yellows and reds, are going to basically be your skin tone. Cool. So let's change that to luminosity. And then we're going to put the opacity down oh, to start at zero and just slowly creep back up until you get to a stage where it's just adding a little bit more shadow into it. We're going to slowly add more shadow into it as we go along. We don't want to go too harsh too quickly. So yeah, quite like that. Just make a new group, just call this colour. Cool, so now what I might do is do a black and white layer again. I feel like this time we just want to desaturate the image with it a little bit. So just bring that down. Cool, so now I'll add a bit of selective colour on here. So this is where you can get really creative with your different colours and I feel like if you start to have a look then it can quite easily come from this. This is it's a great way to kind of adjust skin tones, just basically any colours. You can go through every single different type and just really kind of like tweak it around to see what you like. I feel like going from one end to the one end to the other is always a good thing to do and then bring it back to whatever looks good to your eye. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I feel like this image is mainly kind of beigey tone, so it will be mostly red and red and yellows, but we can come down to like the whites and neutrals as well to start giving it a bit more kind of character in the back. So you can kind of see if you look in the background, which is actually completely white, I'm making that more blue or more pink. So yeah, so if you wanted to give it a real kind of like moody film look, you can maybe bring this down in the neutrals. You get a lot of character come through here in terms of if you want to get really stylistic with things. I quite like the kind of peachiness of that. So you can see here by bringing the yellows up a little bit, it gives it a lot of warmer look, a bit more kind of like golden hour kind of feel to it. It's quite nice actually, I might do that. Cool, so you can see here if I turn this on and off, what a difference that's made to the colour. And again, again you can save this as a colour preset. So if you do want to create your own presets within Photoshop, but are just based with this selective colour, you can do that so every single time your images will have the same kind of like feel to them. Cool, so I'm quite happy with that colouring. I think what I want to do now is just start to really work on getting that depth into it. So what I'm going to do is do a curves layer. Bring that up. It's going to double click on the layer and then use this blend if area down here. So you can see by moving this to the left, it starts to only affect the highlights. If you go, think of it as like dark to light, left to right. So you choose what area you actually want to do. And when you find somewhere that looks pretty good, if you hold option, you can split that. You can start to work on just the highlights. We can see it on and off, just how it adds a little bit more depth to the face. And then we're going to do the same with the shadows as well. So curves, drop that down. Double click, and we're bringing the whites to the other side this time, so we only work on the shadows. Yeah, there we go. So you can see if I turn these two on and off, how much extra depth and contrast it gets into that image. Because what we do next is just brighten up the eyes a little bit. So we're going to do a curves layer, boost it up quite high. And then we're going to go Command I to invert that. And then we're basically just going to paint onto the mask in white where we want to reveal through. So I've got a nice soft brush here. Just going to paint that onto the irises. And then switch back to black to just paint everywhere we've gone out of the lines. Because it's a bit extreme at the moment, so I'm just going to drop that down a little bit. You can kind of see on and off just how it really pops those eyes by just using a really simple technique. Cool. So what we can do now is maybe do a colour lookup table. So colour lookup, it has loads of preset ones in here that all give a completely different style. So you can press stuff that's called moonlight, so it goes to dark blue. 
late sunset gives you kind of purple and yellow. So again, these are very stylistic looks, but each of them, you can, what I would do is kind of put them on and then take them back. So for example, if we went with full colors, this is quite like a warmth to it. So if we just drop this down to, just let's go to 24, 24%. Let's say, again, like the highlights we did before, if we just want the shadows to feel warmer, we can bring this back in here. And I would always recommend splitting it just so it blends a lot nicer between the two. So, but now I've added some kind of like warm tones into my shadows. I'm pretty happy with how that's looking, to be honest. Um, what I might do now is just do one final curves layer. And if you look into the bars at the top right, there's auto options and you just get a few different versions of auto so what it does is it basically reads it and then gives you different ways that you can automatically adjust the contrast it's worth just kind of going through this list of things just to see which one you prefer the most so i think that one for me i like the look of the most let's go with that yeah, I'm really happy with that. So the last thing I do before I finish is I go Control Alt Shift E. That's Command Option Shift E to basically select all and just merge it into a brand new layer. And then from there, we're just basically going to sharpen it. So we can go Filter Other. And we do a high pass. We want to bring this up just until you start to see a bit of detail come through. Then we're going to set that to Overlay, and it just adds a really sharp layer on top of your image. Cool, so thanks so much for watching guys. Uh, if you've got any questions, if you like this edit, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe because I'm going to be making more in the future. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Adam Brazier. You can see that here. See you in the next one.